Hello guys, welcome back to the Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about the curtailment of bars in the beam. It's very important to know about the curtailment of bars. Curtailment of bars actually means that we cut certain length of the bars in the beam in order to make an economical beam design. So we should, I should also explain this with the help of example so it will be more easy to understand. But first of all, I want to show you something very important. In civil engineering, we have two main things. One is the safety of the structure and the second thing is the economical design of the structure. These are the two main things. First, our structure should must be in a safe way design. So there is more safety factor in order to take the load, the coming loads on the our structure. The second thing in our civil engineering is that it should must be an economical design so we don't have to invest so much money so after this in order to make an economical design we need the curtailment of bars in our structure members so now come to the curtailment of bars let's consider that this is our beam this is our beam the horizontal member is the beam and these vertical members are for example are the columns here is one column and here is another our second column so this is general a frame structure where there is a con consist of the beam and columns so beam is a horizontal member and columns are the vertical members so if i apply any load on this for example there is any load acting on this beam which is which is mostly in the case of reality so what happens this beam will bend like in this way and it will show some bending moment and I'm drawing the bending moment diagram. So this is a general bending moment diagram for such type of the beam. When there is a uniformly distributed load, this load is a UDL or uniformly distributed load acting on the beam. And this red is the bending moment diagram for this beam and column. So we see here that the maximum pass to bending moment will be somewhere at the midpoint of the beam. Here we will have at this point we will have maximum positive bending moment maximum positive bending moment and the negative bending moment will occur at the columns so here will be the maximum negative bending moment and also here there will be maximum negative bending moment so this these are this is the general uh, bending moment diagram for such type of the beam now if you look to this area there, there is a pass to bending moment so we we have to provide the uh, steel bar in order to take the tension because concrete is weak in tension so we have to provide our steel bar in this region and there is no need to provide the steel bar here at this part of the beam and also there is no need to provide the steel bar at this part of the beam because these part are in tension but not in bottom this part of the beam have the pass to bending moment it means pass to bending moment means it provides the reinforcement at the bottom portion of the beam while here we have negative bending moment it means that we have to provide the uh, reinforcement bar at the top section of the beam here at the top section here at the top section of the beam so there is also no need to provide the bars up to this region and also up to this region now if we look to the another figure so it will help us to clarify this curtailment of bars in beam. So I'm going to show the curtailment of bars according to the ACI 318.14. So this was before I show the general diagram. Now if I place the reinforcement bar, so the pulse to bending moment, for pulse to bending moment, I will place the tensile bars at the bottom of the beam. And ACI says that don't provide the bottom bar here in this region and also here in this region because there is no pass to bending moment so what we have l by 8 and this is also l by 8 where l is the total length of the beam this is l so l by 8 there should not be any pass to reinforcement and also here there will be no pass to reinforcement similarly at the negative portion here we have the negative reinforcement for example so and here also we have negative reinforcement 
So the court says, the ECI court says that up to the distance of from the column up to the distance of L by 3, we should provide our top negative reinforcement. And here from this column up to this, we should provide our reinforcement bar, negative reinforcement bar, the distance of L by 3. Now if my total length of the beam is for example 8 meter, so L by 8 means if divide 8 by 8, it means 1 meter. And here also we have 1 meter. It means up to 1 meter, we will not provide anything at this region. At this region, we will not provide any, anything. And we will also not provide any bars here at this region. But we will start placing our bars for the past bending moment at starting from 1 meter from both ends. So in the top case, if you L by 3, so L is 8 dividing by 3, we get 2.67. Here is also 2.67. It means that we will place our bar from this column, from this column up to this region, up to the distance of 2.67 meter. We should place here and also here 2.67 meter, we can place our top negative reinforcement bar. And there is no negative, re uh, negative bending moment, so there is no need to provide the bar in this region, where I draw it like this, so there is no need to provide the bar in this region. So this is the general, uh, or the general recommendation by the ACI 1314 for the curtailment of the bars in the beams. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.